We talk to people battling blood cancers and other diseases to learn more about why raising funds is so crucial. In the last decade, over 40% of cancer treatment and medicine came from LLS-funded research. Which is not only used to treat people with blood cancers, but also those affected by other cancers and diseases, such as breast cancer and liver cancers. <clears throat> so, what age was Seth diagnosed with leukemia? He was four. How did it affect your guys' daily lives and how is it going to affect your future? Well, when it first happened, it affected it a lot because we had to change work schedules and be in the hospital for a week at a time th for three different weeks, and it, it just really changed a lot, taking time off to go to the doctor's offices because at the beginning we had to go a lot for appointments for blood work and chemo, and, yeah. and mm -hmm. like I had to start working weekends and from home, and and took what, about two days off a week. I took three days off a week, so for about seven months it really changed our life. So everything was just for him there was no planning vacations or anything mm -hmm. yeah. so pretty much we had to just plan to stay around home yeah and we actually had to cancel our Disney vacation oh. Oh. <laughs> that was his his one thing when he you know when he turned four we said okay we get to go to Disney yeah. we planned it we paid for nearly half of it and then this came up and oh. we had to cancel it but um, that's his make-a-wish oh. so, yeah, so, so he'll, he'll be going yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting <laughs> What kind of treatments and procedures did he endure and how frequently? Well, his treatment came in like six different phases. Um, we were told that leukemia was, is pretty smart and can adapt to the treatments. Yeah. So they like to uh, basically have different types of treatment throughout. Okay. So in the beginning, they hit it very hard um, to put it into remission. So the first 28 days, it was, you know, uh, we were in the hospital and then they had basically um, his immunity was very low, so we had to stay in the house. Um, and then the next phase probably wasn't too hard. No, um, do everything every 10 days. He had to go in for uh, IV infusion for chemo. Yeah, and, and then he also had um, lumbar punctures yeah. where they actually have to put chemo in his spine because it's a blood cancer. Yeah. And so to put it in the spine, it, it bypasses the blood-brain barrier. Mm -hmm. So he has, he's going to have 30-plus of those over the time yeah. of his treatment. But um, he had uh, one of the phases was delayed intensification, which was he, he that was a lot of chemo, and that's the time where he um, his lost hair his hair. Yeah. And then I don't know how many months that was. That was Six, 60 50, days? 58 days. 58 days. And then for two of the weeks, we were in the hospital four days in a row just to get chemo outpatient four days in a row. And yeah, that's right. Yeah. One of the days was a 12 and a half hour day because he got several different types that had to be spaced out. Yeah. And now he's reached what they refer to as maintenance, mm -hmm. um, and that basically he goes in once a month yeah. and he gets lab work, and then every third month when he gets the lab, he then gets chemo in his port, and then he also gets one of the lumbar punctures. So basically he's every three months, but then he takes oral chemo meds daily. At home. Yeah. And then like one day a week he takes an extra chemo pill. Um, of the of one of the types that he could have got in you know IV, mm -hmm. so um, that's good because in the beginning it was really tough for him to take pills. Yeah. There, you know um, he wouldn't take any type of liquid pill at all, mm -hmm. and that was probably one of our biggest struggles as we went on this adventure. Yeah. <laughs> um, there were times where they he'd have to have like five nurses holding him down. Oh. Um, they would have to plug his nose. They would have to, you know, then try to, you know, hold. I mean, it, 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 it was horrible to see because, you yeah. know, I, I kept thinking, here's my child who has cancer. Yeah. And here we are, five people laying on top of him trying to get him to, yeah. to take his medicine. Is there any, like, is there any specific things that you'd want to share with anyone about leukemia or if anyone's going through it? I would say the main thing is just take your kids for their annual physical because that's how we found it because he didn't really have any symptoms. Yeah. Yeah, that's important. And the fact that, you know, the reason that his diagnosis has such um, a cure rate is because of fundraising. You know, people have yeah. donated money to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society and it has allowed them to do research that has made his cancer a very curable cancer. And so we're very thankful to that. So yeah. it's important that you know, people are aware that their monies go to, you know, a good cause. So what age were you diagnosed with that I was diagnosed around six. Um, it runs in the family, so it's kind of a genetic condition. 
and my mom and uncle both had it and so did my grandma so they decided to get me tested for it to see if I had it because we wanted to know mm-hmm. what it could be. What are the typical symptoms of the disease? Um, there's many different symptoms. Uh, <clears throat> it's pretty much just a lack of a protein that helps fight off tumors. The main three areas are in the pituitary, which is like around what well, kind of like right up here like on your brain stem a little bit in front of it then you can get it in the parathyroid which is right here and the pancreas which is right beneath your stomach but those are the three main areas for tumors each tumor comes with different um symptoms like the pancreas can provide like insulinoma which is a lot like diabetes so your blood sugar levels are messed up um parathyroid has a lot to do with blood pressure and calcium levels so you can have pretty much anything. <laughs> what symptoms do you have today? Um, today, uh, not too much, but they're expecting it to get like more and more symptoms as I grow older. But I have, most of the time I have like an extreme thirst. I almost can't stop drinking water throughout the day. Um, loss of appetite many times, extreme tiredness and muscle weakness like i'll be practicing sports and out of nowhere my knees or my arms will just completely give out and just stuff along those lines so how has it affected your daily life and like how will it affect you in like the long term um it hasn't affected me too much just it's a bit annoying like i have another symptom is like a constant twitching on this side of my face Uh Um, it just gets annoying with that and like the muscles giving out and stuff like that but in the long term they're expecting it to spread Um, currently they're suspecting I have a tumor in the parathyroid which is the neck and um, there's pretty much like once it starts there's not really stopping it's just gonna keep spreading so they're just expecting that to happen so I'll continually get more and more symptoms